Hey everyone, this is Disc Junkie and welcome back to the Man Cave of Madness. Today I want to make a really long video, just so you know. I know I always make long videos, but today I wanted to do something which I haven't done for quite a while. And that is that I actually want to do a full walkthrough of the Man Cave. To show you sort of where everything is, sort of how I have it sort of sorted out. And basically what the place looks like. So without further ado, let's just dig into it. And so right away, when I flip the camera, you will notice that we are in the smaller room. I essentially have two rooms for those of you who are brand new to this channel. I basically have this, which is a smaller room. And then I have a second room where I have my TV. And this is quite a larger room. Although, I mean, both of these rooms are quite small in terms of, you know, man cave status. But what the hell? You take what you got. And I got these two rooms. So I've been working quite a long time for several years to really sort of... You know make these work to my advantage and basically set it up exactly the way i want it and so we can actually just start from this point this is the staircase which comes from the bottom floor and up here on the second floor it's basically just a man cave it's just these two rooms there's nothing else and so when i'm coming up the stairs i do actually have some movie posters here or movie themed one might say these are actually a trilogy of posters i suppose and it is something made by a guy called Danny Miller and he's just a really talented guy and I essentially picked up these posters because I found this Leatherface poster which I just fell in love with and I'm just such a big fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre that I felt like, you know, I really want to have this poster. And these are all original prints from Danny. They are essentially signed, got a small signature down there. And I also have a poster here which is for Phantasm. Sorry about the glare of the light. Let me just move down here so you can see it. And so these are all done in very much the same style. You got the Phantasm one, then you got Leatherface slash Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And then the last one right up there that is sort of like a general homage to movies. I don't really remember what the motive of this one is called, but it's just this really cool looking chick. And she basically has all these guns on the wall beside her. And these are actually all movie guns. All of these guns are sort of relating classic guns to specific films. And it's just, you know, she's got everything. She got like a blaster rifle from the Alien Saga. She's got like the Watchman gun. You know, there's Blade Runner, Star Wars, Conan Sword. There's a whole lot of stuff in here. It's just a really, really cool and very sort of inspiring and smart poster. I just love it. And so I decided to get these three posters and put them here on this wall, which is basically like the only wall I have to put posters because I mean, as much as I love the man cave and you know, love this whole setup, there's absolutely nowhere I can put posters. The only place I can put posters is essentially the slanted ceiling. And this is something which I put up in one of my older videos and I'm essentially been framing some really old vintage style magazines here. And I noticed that my camera is actually really yellow right now, so sorry about that, but sometimes the light in here just tends to, you know, give it a very sort of yellow glare. So hopefully I can sort of correct that a little bit in post-production, but if not, then you're just gonna have to you know bear with me so up here are some vintage style magazines which i got framed and uh, you know these are just basically regular ikea frames like their cheapest kind but i'm really happy with how this turned out and it definitely adds a you know special style to the man cave which i'm really happy about and then on the reverse side i got exactly the same style of frames but a completely different set of magazines. And these are these vintage magazines uh, called Flashback. It's an old Swedish magazine. And this just has a really, really cool history. They essentially started out as a paper magazine, quite controversial, sort of empowering free speech and things like that. And this magazine eventually sort of evolved into becoming Sweden's sort of leading internet forum for like alternate culture and it's just an incredibly cool set of magazines which i love and these are actually quite collectible and go for quite a bit of money today but these are original magazines and i basically just slapped them into a frame there's just plastic in front and then it's just a regular ribba frame which is from ikea already talked a bit about these in the past and if we are to check out the rest of the room just giving you a bit of an overview as you come up here. I do have quite a few sections 
And one of the most noticeable, which people know about already, is probably my Texas Chainsaw Massacre collection, which is basically made up of these three Billy bookshelves at the center here. But, I mean, if we are to keep this sort of coherent and easy to follow, I think I'm just gonna go basically shelf by shelf. So, let's start over here. First, we got the elephant in the room, as I like to call it. It has nothing to do with movies. I just got this elephant for free. It's like one of those old porcelain style elephants. And I just like it because I can keep it and I can actually stack movies on there, which are basically new films, stuff I borrowed, and just things I should watch, even though I don't always do it. But you can stack stuff there if you don't want to sort them into the collection for some reason. Looking at this section, we can start up here, which is a small little Mindhunter corner. I'm a really big fan of the Mindhunter TV show. I just think, you know, David Fincher has always been a very sort of big part of my interesting films and interesting TV, I guess. And I just think that the Mindhunter show is probably one of his best efforts. I mean, I love his movies like Zodiac and all that. And here I have essentially put in these two quite rare screening DVDs of the first season. So this is some of these FYC for your consideration releases which are generally sent out to the press and the media field, so it's not something you can purchase in stores or in retail, so to speak. And then I've actually decided to pick up this, which is the exact same type of reel-to-reel -reel player that they have in the intro of the show. I just think this is an awesome looking machine. And I also picked up exactly the same model of a microphone, and you can even see the reel-to-reel -reel player on this particular cover in the background there. So. Yeah, it actually doesn't work. There's some problems with it, but I just think it's so cool looking that I really wanted to keep it here on display. And then here are also some additional reel-to-reel -reel reels, <laughs> which I picked up. So I just thought I'd stack them there for, you know, they sort of fit the theme. Then we got a really, really big oversized box set for the film 300, which is obviously, you know, also a really cool movie. Quite enjoy this. And this also comes with almost like a stunt helmet, I suppose, because it's very wobbly, sort of rubbery type thing, but you can wear it. So that's why the box is so big. I'm not crazy about this box set. It's from Spain. It's quite rare and unusual. But I had it for years and I've been meaning to sell it for quite a long time, but I didn't get anyone to buy it. So that was one of those things which just take up a whole lot of room. And that's basically why I not super huge fan of it but i still have it so not really sure if i would sell it today but it's been on my mind then we got some books these are very random books not any particular theme to them they are basically you know anything i'm not overly big on books or at least i did not used to be I have gotten more and more into books recently and so I have, you know, sort of stacked up some books that I have and this is like everything from, you know, the satanic bible to my dad wrote the porno. It's just I really like alternate type books or weird books and here's some other stuff. There's some books on exploitation films and things like that. And overall I think these shelves over here are very random. It's just a lot of stuff that's basically crammed in here as you can see. Here's an old projector for like these still frames. I forget what they're called in English. And just down here some additional stuff which I haven't been able to fit in anywhere else. Here are some VHS releases. You will notice that I mix quite a lot of stuff. I have a very sort of broad interest in films. I collect basically everything from Super 8 to 4K Blu-ray. It's a never-ending exception. I mean, I like all kinds of formats, all kinds of movies. And yeah, here's just a small selection of videotapes from a Swedish label, so I try to sort up videotapes based on labels. And when it comes to DVDs and Blu-rays, I tend to usually sort those by genre, unless it's a very specific label, which I collect just that label. I might sort that on its own, but yeah. Got an old single eight editor, which is just a machine I bought at the flea market. I don't really use it, I just bought it because I thought it looked cool. Here's some vintage magazines, usually like, not really adult, but sort of, you know, playboyish type magazines. And I have a whole lot of that kind of stuff. Then if you move up, I have some more books. You know, now we're sort of getting into uh, Blu-rays and DVDs. Got like the Blade Runner attaché case, an old promotional Matrix attaché case, 
and just generally some larger boxes clockwork orange dvd collector set just things that might not fit into like the smaller type shelves that's usually why it ends up here and there's also you know quite a bit of books here sort of collectors type books this one debauched really cool sort of vintage erotica slash occult themed book and you know i just really like things like that like very sort of into erotica in general and horror big horror fan so it's not like this is just a movie collection which i think people have probably understood by now i basically collect anything anything that i think is worth collecting that has some sort of collectible value or just seems cool you know it just goes into the collection and this for example is one of those things it's a set of very unusual bound magazine copies. And this is a magazine, you know, not counting this red one because that's a different magazine. But all of these blue ones are from the Swedish magazine, which was called Veckans Brott, which translates to Crime Weekly or Crime of the Week. And this was basically a magazine which came out in the 70s and 80s in Sweden. And it's basically like a cross between a Playboy mag and a sort of fact type magazine about crime they basically all had crime articles in them but in order to sell more they also mix this up with a lot of erotic and you know sort of pornographic material and then as time went on they would go on to become sort of more and more pornographic and i can't really show you too much because usually the covers are you know quite explicit or can be but i mean oh yeah this is the same type of magazines that I have framed in the ceiling, as you saw before. So this should give you some idea sort of what the covers are like. It's usually like a damsel in distress kind of thing. And they just look really, really weird and really, really strange. And I don't know, it's just, it's very sort of exploitation type stuff. So I was able to purchase these from a really unique source. These are actually bound copies that came from the publisher's personal referential library so these are the personal copies from the publisher so there's only one set of these in existence was able to purchase quite a few of them so you can see i got here 1973 1975 76 77 79 then i got some more over here which is 81 82 83 84 85 86 and 1987 some of them are sort of split like there will be two books for one year while others are just like one volume, one year. But yeah, a whole lot of books, a whole lot of magazines. Incredible find. I'm so in love with these, even though they were quite expensive. It's just one of those things that I couldn't pass up. Like once in a lifetime opportunity to pick up these books. And some of the magazines, like on the interior of the binding, some of these volumes are actually signed by the publisher. And this was you know, quite a famous guy back in the day. He was sort of nicknamed the Porn King. And we're gonna get back to him. He essentially released a whole bunch of books. He's released so much stuff. And I'm gonna show you some of that, which I have in the other room. But for now, let's just move on and check out the rest of the shelves in here. And so moving up, we have some other sort of larger sets. Very mixed still. Here we got a promotional Rango box set. Here's one of those vintage sort of VHS carrying cases. This is what I do. I tend to buy anything which I find interesting. I'm very into vintage stuff. I go to a lot of flea markets, pick up bizarre sort of forgotten media and technology and things like that. So this is what you end up with. This is my madness. This is like everything that sort of defines my collecting ability or my collecting obsession, if you will. So... A lot of weird stuff like that and not to go through it all but checking up here we get to a very different part of my collection which is my erotica and i have several sections like this there's quite a bit of erotica in the other room but up here i got some of my vhs for the most part and i decided to place them on this top shelf because then they're not as accessible if you have you know, people with kids coming over, I don't want them to accidentally just reach for a tape and grab it from one of the bottom shelves and it ends up being like, you know, hardcore porn on the back. So I keep some of that stuff up here and this doesn't really matter. And if you know me, you know me, but for the record, 
it's not like I collect porn because I have an obsession to watch all of these movies. I mean, if you think about it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Not saying that I don't watch porn, because I certainly do, but I mean, this is stuff that I buy from a collective standpoint. These are all very sort of vintage and old style videotapes. It's all very sort of 70s, 80s old type pornography and I'm just a really big fan of vintage stuff in general and I just like the history of erotica. Not gonna go through much in detail. Here's a bear with a really really big penis but this doesn't really matter. Let's just move on. So here we get to some additional titles. There are some DVDs and Blu-rays, some animated pornography or animated erotica like Fritz the Cat for instance. So I try to mix stuff in like it's not only hardcore films. It's also things which start to move into that sort of scene. I will have like some of these cult movies like The Intruders, an old Swedish film, and Breaking Point, which isn't really, this is a bootleg DVD, but it's some of these sort of famed cult movies which might have sort of hardcore scenes in them, even though the film itself might not be considered like a porno, so to speak. Doesn't really matter, and I'm rambling, I tend to do this. Moving on to the next shelf, it's something called Drink Book, and it's this series, I got four of them, and they are basically like these vintage liquor bottles, which were hidden somewhat in these oversized VHS style clam cases. And uh, I mean, I really don't know much about these, I just know that I like them a lot, so I decided to start collecting them. I think there's only five to the series, I'm just missing one. Would like to have these on display, but I can't right now, I haven't found a good spot for them, so they're just in here. Then we get to these uh, magazines again, which I already talked about. And down here are some additional of these box sets and various books and stuff, which are just, you know, perfectly sized for this particular shelf. So here's a book on the Dark Knight. We got a book by Roy Stewart, really bizarre photographic erotica kind of book. We got Gotham 1919 to 1939, really awesome book by Giant Panda King. If you're into movies, you really should check these out. They make so much cool and bizarre stuff like a live sort of musical theater which is called the empire strips back where they basically just look it up giant panda king it's an awesome company making really really cool stuff then there's just you know various box sets here's a natural born killers dvd set here's a seven dvd set david fincher usual suspects it's just a whole bunch of different stuff then down here we got texas chainsaw massacre fright rags box set it's a t-shirt box, some more vintage magazines, I think most of them are erotic, so I can't really show them. A limited edition set for the film Yellow, can't really say too much about that, except that it's an awesome yellow type short film. I forget what the director is called, but just google it, it's really cool. Then we got some other VHS tapes down here, same type of label, so not really like I have any sort of sorting here, it's just because it's the same label. Moving up and looking at this corner, we obviously have this vintage style theater chair, which I picked up recently. I have two of them, so there's one in the other room as well. But this one over here, I put this here recently because I wasn't really sure where to place it. And you know what? It is absolutely... It is so fucking warm in here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove my shirt. This is just a bonus for everyone watching. I'm actually now removing my shirt, even though you can't really see it, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that I'm doing this on camera, but... <sighs> ah, what the hell, there you go. <sighs> That's just how warm it is now in Sweden, it's basically like 30 degrees or something, which is quite unusual for Sweden. But I'm just gonna continue anyway, because the show must go on. And I think actually the colors became better now that I took my shirt off, so... I don't know what that's all about, but let's just continue. So here we have quite a mixed bag of stuff, but there's quite a bit of sort of retro themed items. Some of them are actual vintage items, while others are just sort of made to look vintage. I'm very much a fan of sort of retro editions, like the stuff I have down here. And just starting from the top, we got some cool books by Simon Stolen Hogg, who is a Swedish graphic designer or artist. Most people have probably heard about him. 
he sort of makes these absolutely amazing graphic designs which is sort of a mix between Sweden in the 70s, 80s and the future. It's just absolutely insane. But most people probably know about his name already. He became quite viral back in the day when he started out. So here are just some of his limited edition books. Google him if you don't know that name. Then we have some promotional boxes. The Disturbia Home Confinement Kit. We got a Dharma Initiative Water Bottle Lost series. I uh, got some Simpson figures. You know, I like to mix it up in terms of displaying everything that I love. Like, you know, everything, be it like a VHS case to like having small toys. It's just a mixed bag, but this is how it works. And over here, the book which I picked up very recently, which is called Psychedelic Sex. It's a downright amazing looking art book from Paul Krasner. And I can't really show you anything of this because it's quite explicit, but you should Google that if you're into erotica and want to, you know, like art books. It's from Tashin, which is just an awesome company. They make really, really cool collector's type books. So look into that if you enjoy their kind of products. Here we got a limited edition old Korean box set for Indiana Jones. Comes with this leather binder and this really cool looking little medallion. Very much in the style of the one you see in the film. And you got a car hairdryer. What's going on? This is what I'm telling you. It's crazy. I got folders of microfish here. This is like the complete library of Sports Fucking Illustrated, the magazine, on microfish. Why do I have this on microfish? I will tell you, but not right now. Next up, here is a BASF, a classic VHS format, promotional bag. Yeah, I can't even explain everything, so let's just move on, because I'm noticing that the heat is very much affecting my temper and my possibility to keep a thread going. Anyway, here are basically all of my retro style editions. And what I mean by that is that these are all films which are very sort of modern, but they were designed or inspired by, you know, vintage films. Like, I think the titles speak for themselves. Here we got Wolf Cop, we got Turbo Kid, Kung Fury, Bandersnatch. Either the films were made, you know, in the modern day, but made to look old. Or we're talking about modern day films that are not meant to look old, but the edition is meant to look old. Like here we got Mad Max Fury Road Black and Chrome Edition, which is actually a custom job. I received this as an absolutely awesome gift from a guy called CD Metric on Instagram. Just love the design. And it's things like this. A lot of this it's very sort of underground or gray area type releases like it's not like it's all big companies a lot of this is very much small numbers limited edition sets lake nowhere really cool in the movie and uh, yeah that's basically what i got over here mostly it's videotapes but it can basically be dvds blu-rays anything then we get to some proper vintage items here are my old nintendo games from when i was a kid in recent years i also picked up some additional games which i always wanted like the mega man number six so i basically have all the games in the series that came out on the nintendo which is parts one through six i think part six was only released in the us the others were released in europe i believe all the way up to number five but yeah it's just i love nintendo it was a really big part of my childhood so really wanted to pick up some cool games for it and uh, yeah still have my original console the one i played on as a kid and actually still works i mean not all the time but most of the times then still on the topic of nintendo games here are some really cool looking vintage style rental clamshells I know this isn't something that was available in all countries, but here in Sweden it was like a standard. So you will actually have a case which looks very much like a VHS case, but it's actually a completely unique case. It has this inlay to make it sort of fit a NES game. So it can't actually hold a videotape. It's meant to just fit these games. But so I got a couple of these. They're quite collectible today. I don't have games in all of them, some are just empty cases, but I just love this kind of stuff. It definitely is something which brings back memories 
for me as a kid and you know with this said i obviously wanted stuff like this for the collection because you know i love looking back at things from my childhood and i just love collecting and this is the kind of stuff i buy so quite a bit of these rental cases but also here i keep some of these heart box editions which are usually from germany they release a lot of this in germany and austria so these are limited edition dvds a lot of it comes from labels like 84 entertainment almost looks like a book but it's actually a dvd case i think most people know about this but if for some reason you don't if you're brand new to collecting movies then uh, that's something to look up, I suppose. And then over here, just before we move on, here are some of my Super 8 movies. I don't have a whole lot of them. Most of the ones I have are actually erotic films, but here are some non-erotic films. I got like the original Alien, which is just like selected scenes, 17 minutes. And uh, yeah, got Helter Skelter. Got a German copy here of Phantasm, which got stuck or something. Well, we don't have to look at this now. There's just too much to go through. So let's just move on. And I'm going to try not to make too much of a mess, which is why I'm placing the stuff back where they were. So now we obviously get to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre collection. And this is quite extensive. I would say that I have roughly 300 unique copies of the same film. And you might wonder why... It's not really something I can explain. I just really love this film. It had a huge impact on me when I first watched it. I didn't grow up with this film. I basically saw it first time back in 2008 or 2010. And it just completely changed the way I view movies. I instantly fell in love with it. And I just started watching horror films in general. And, you know, throughout my youth, I have never been into horror movies until I watched The Text Chains of Massacre. That completely changed changed everything I knew about films and I just suddenly realized like why horror films is something that people would enjoy watching up until that point I just didn't get it I had never had any kind of interest in horror movies but after watching this film it's just there's a reason why they call it the mother of all horror films because it's groundbreaking and for anyone out there who's never seen this film who think you know what you're talking about you probably have no idea i thought that this film was going to be something else entirely and then i watched it and i'm like this is the most perfect brilliant horror film there ever was and it completely changed everything I thought I knew about horror movies. And I am rambling, but as you can see, I am quite a fan of this film. I got this on basically every format from Super 8 to Betamax to videotape to Blu-ray, 4K, DVD, you name it, I got it. And a lot of the times I will have exactly the same release, like here for instance. I got exactly the same spine, but that's because one of them is Betamax and the other is regular VHS, so they have the same cover. But that's the kind of guy I am, very much a completist, at least when it comes to Texas Chainsaw. Like, if there's a particular cover, I would like to get this, even if it's like three different versions for the same film. Like, if you got this on Betamax, VHS, and Video 2000, DVD, Blu-ray, I'm basically trying to collect one copy of every edition ever released. And... I think I'm actually doing quite well. I know there's probably a version out there I don't have. I'm not saying that this is like all the versions ever released, but I have actually ticked off most of the super rare versions. There's quite a lot of tapes in here which are worth like several hundred dollars per tape. I kid you not, it is an insane, insane world when it comes to collecting this particular film. But... I am rambling. So yeah, I'm just gonna get my shirtless fucking ass up and we are gonna look some more at this corner over here. I can't really dive into everything about Texas Chainsaw because it's just too many editions and we can't look at all of them. In this corner here is something really unique. This is an RS3000 which is a vintage style Super 8 television. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to most people, but it's basically a Super 8 projector which uses rear projection. So it basically has a projector within this machine. There is a small mirror on this flap, so it can project out this window. But when you close this, the mirror inside will flip the image 
and actually mirror it onto this thin plastic screen so it will actually be back projected onto the screen which makes it sort of work like a television and then you just put the reel on the side here so it works like a regular projector and i bought this because it's such an incredibly bizarre machine it's an absolute mess to work with it seems like it breaks down all the time i wouldn't recommend it if you want to have a you know reliable machine but i love it for its design and strangeness then below it I have some additional projectors which is usually what I use when I want to watch Super 8s. So these are more reliable. Got one sound projector and one which is silent. And oh yeah we're actually going to look at the stuff here just quickly. So I'm going to pull this out of the way like so. And then we can just continue looking at this corner. So here is a little bit sorted but not super sorted. Down at the bottom I have some VHS tapes, these are Swedish releases from a company called Aselti. It's quite a famous company, you probably recognize these yellow cases in the same style for this specific label. Then moving up we got some DVDs, Blu-rays, generally I would consider this like my main horror section. It is very mixed, it's got all kinds of subgenres in there, but it's just generally a horror section, so... Not gonna go in too close, but just giving you some idea of what I get in here. And I also want to mention that I've been collecting films for quite some time now. I've had this YouTube channel for over 10 years, and I basically started out by collecting limited edition DVDs and Blu-rays. I always wanted to get the most unique version, the one that had the most special features, and so probably 70-80% of these are all like collector's editions, limited editions, or things that have a very sort of unique reason why I picked up this version. Like they're usually the best quality, the best extra, something like that. Maybe not today, but back when I bought them, they were like top of the line and that's why I got them. So just looking at some of the other stuff, here's a small presentational shelf once again. And I don't know what to say about this. Here's some old, I don't know if it's a camera gadget or some sort of x-ray machine i basically have no idea i got this at a flea market i forget if i even know what it's used for but yeah it's uh it's just a bizarre piece of machinery so i keep it on display ah <sighs> yeah i know it's madness and on the topic of madness here is a limited edition meat cleaver for the movie cannibal girls a old 70s film and i forget what the company is called that issued this but it was part of this limited edition set which i thought was really cool i believe i have a blu-ray for this as well but you know the name escapes me in terms of what the company was actually called let's just have a look it's from a company called filmswelike.com and this was a very sort of limited run i believe i have no idea how many they made but i know that you could order this as limited edition set and you got the blu-ray you got the meat cleaver this is actually quite sharp so i might actually cut my finger but didn't mean to do that and you actually also got a cooking apron which had the cannibal girls logo on it so yeah quite a cool set really bizarre and i haven't really had this on display ever i just found it in the box in the garage recently and decided like okay i really want to put this on display because it's such an odd piece and speaking of odd this is a vintage style really bizarre doll which has a twistable head with three different faces on it and no, this is not actually like a custom job. This is actually a vintage style doll which was made for kids back in the day. I'm not entirely sure on the year, if it's like the 50s, the 60s. But one thing which I realized after purchasing this is that there's actually a doll very much like this which is featured in a film called Alice Sweet Alice, which is a horror classic. But I haven't actually seen it, a bit shameful. I've been meaning to pick it up, but I just haven't gotten around to it. And that was a flea market find. It cost quite a bit of money, but I still wanted to get it because I thought it was so cool. I basically found out that I think it's not like a super rare or anything. It's basically like a knockoff model. But I mean, it's pretty vintage and I think it looks really cool. Then back in the background here, we have these quite unusual limited edition sets, which are custom cases. This is from an underground label, which is called I Hate People. I have no fucking clue as to who makes these. Total mystery to me. And I bought these from another collector. It's basically a German underground 
release, which is just produced in eight copies. This is number three of eight. He's basically made a ton of these. This one is for Rob Zombie's Lords of Salem. Then we got Devil's Rejects in the back, and then we got The Descent. I just bought these because I think they are awesome in their design. I love the alternate cover art and the sort of oversized VHS case. These basically are just empty cases. Apart from Lords of Salem, which also came with this little custom case. Very much like the record box in the film. This is actually a miniature version of that. It actually has the CD soundtrack on it, on like a homemade CD or DVD-R. So, I just love this. It's not a super complicated job. I mean, the box is obviously meant for something else. But, I don't know. I love it. I think it's a cool idea. So, I was really happy to get that. Because I think the film itself is very much a Rob Zombie classic. And it's definitely one of those films which I think warrants a rewatch. Because I definitely liked Lords of Salem so much more when I saw it the second time. First time I was a bit iffy. But re-watching it, I just felt like, okay, that is actually a really, really awesome horror film. Let's just move on. So up here, we got some additional stuff from my Texas Chainsaw collection. We got the Black Maria Trucking Company, which is from Fright Rags, an old limited edition. We got the Black Maria Truck Box Set, which is a DVD Blu-ray from America. Then we got the Living Dead Dolls Large Figure Doll, whatever, of Leatherface. Then there's just a whole bunch of mixed stuff here. I don't know what this is. Picked it up at a flea market, thought it felt very sort of phantasm, I don't know. Here's a vintage toy robot, which I believe is from Hong Kong in the 1960s. Also something I found at a flea market, it's one of these wind-up toys, just think it looks really cool. Then over here we obviously get to like the second opening sort of pedestal, the same type of style that I have on the other side. You know, I have these Benno shelves here, where I've decided to display some covers of some films that I really like. Or films that are just, you know, very, very sort of good looking. I mean, I'm basically all about cover art. That's one of my main drives when it comes to collecting films. I just love displaying covers and I just love movie artworks in general. And if we're moving on to this top shelf over here, this is very much the same idea as the shelf I showed you on the other side of the room. This is another part of my erotica collection. So these are basically videotapes of a bunch of vintage erotic films. One of my all-time favorites is The Devil Insider. Absolutely insane, sort of occult-style, devil-themed film. Also got a limited edition, sort of underground version of that right here, which is from a really sort of unique and collectible label, which is called The Uneasy Archive. And uh, this is also like one of those one-of-a-kind pink variation copies. I think they're just to me one of that. But yeah, I'm not saying all of these are like collector's editions, but I do have some modern stuff like that, which is like these retro editions. But most of these are just original vintage tapes from the 80s. And it's usually like these old vintage style movies. Also up here on the corner, you will notice some original Playboy Playmate puzzles, which came out in the 70s, I think. And they're basically like these puzzle versions, which came in little tin cans so you actually get a puzzle which you can lay and then you will get like a picture of the centerfold girl here are just some vintage soda cans you know i just like vintage design in general not gonna spend too much time on the videotapes because i can't really go through everything i can show some stuff every now and then but these are all sort of erotica films up here and here's another one classic the Clockwork Orgy, not spending too much time on that, but it is basically censored. I mean, you can almost not see the nipples. Moving on, some more films down here. These are videotapes usually, but there's also like Blu-ray limited edition box sets. If they're fitting to the format, I like to display those kind of things as well. It doesn't have to be videotapes, it can basically be anything. You know, just as long as it's cover, I think is worth displaying. Then over here, we get into very, very sort of mixed material. I mean, I suppose this section originally started like a found footage section, because found footage and mockumentaries is one of my favorite subgenres within horror and within films in general. I just think mockumentaries, if they're done well, it's just an incredibly awesome thing. So I've tried to make sort of a theme like that here, but it's also didn't go the way I wanted it to. I recently picked up this Red Army Vodka limited edition collector set, 
which, you know, it doesn't fit anywhere in my collection. I don't generally collect alcoholic novelty liquor bottles. But I found this at a flea market, couldn't pass on it, picked it up. I also have some actual vintage style bayonets here. Then we have some of these vintage cameras. I got a copy of Blair Witch because I'm very much trying to get this into like a found footage type section. There's some vintage style film reels, one of these little coins. God, how am I even gonna explain this? There's a documentary which is really cool, which is called Lucifer's Island or Island of Lucifer. Satans Kulten på Anholt in Sweden. I don't have a copy of this yet, but I'm waiting to get one. Jeez, I can't even get into this because it's too much of a long and complicated story. But if you don't know about this coin, you should definitely check this out. It's just an incredible larger than life story about hoaxes, mysteries, devil worship. It's like a mockumentary, but it's real. It's insane. You have to watch it. I think it's an absolutely incredible documentary. In any case, if we are moving down, here is my mockumentary section. Slash found footage. I consider it the same genre. So here we got stuff like Long Pigs, Blair Witch Project, Cold Ground, Poughkeepsie Tapes, one of my all-time favorites. Fucking awesome horror movie. If you haven't watched that film, and if you're into mockumentaries found footage, this is my fucking top pick. It's my all-time favorite found footage horror film. I think it is fucking sick and twisted and disturbing as fuck. But it's also really, really good. I love it. There is so much stuff to talk about. Here we have Hexam, the esoteric cut, limited edition, promotional... DCP digital cinema package made a video about that also be sure to check it out because it's really cool Then here are some additional VHS tapes This is sort of like you know where I have the line This is where I draw the line and then suddenly it's not found footage and mockumentaries So yeah, I have to make room and I have to sort stuff like I can't just keep it the same You know Sorted way sometimes things just get really mixed up some other tapes down here, these are basically my sort of these cardboard slip cases or cartons which are more common in like America and these are just mixed versions like it's any country basically just those kind of cases because it's not a case type which I generally have a lot of. I don't really collect it per se but every now and then I came across one so I tend to put them in the same spot unless they're part of some other series or some other theme that I'm collecting that I'm keeping on a different place. Then down here some more videotapes, various you know labels, same type of labels same kind of place that I would like to display them. So we got VTC, we got VCM, Swedish labels, these big old vintage style cases which I love. But yeah, that is basically it for this little section. And now we could move into the main movie room. But before that, I obviously have to mention this little corner here, which is the door into what I would like to call the garret or the crawl space. Now I've already made a video about this, you can watch this in detail, but just for the record, if you're a first time viewer and you're just tuning in to watch only this video, I did want to make it very much an overview video. And so here you can see that I actually have a small, <laughs> very cramped area which is actually full of some of these tapes, which are just like duplicates and things which I don't really want to keep on display or don't have room for. I put them in here, but I've already made quite a detailed video about the making of this, so I'm not gonna crawl in here today. But just so you know, this is actually also in here, also part of the man cave, even though uh, I'm sweating like a pig, I can't crawl in here. <laughs> if I crawl in there, I'm probably not going to be able to crawl out so yeah let's just go ahead and move into the main movie room my main man cave this is where i sit late at night watch movies on my tv it is a philips 5500 series i'm thinking i'm not really super big on technology i gotta say i just tend to buy stuff because i feel like oh that's exactly the size i need but I love this TV, it's absolutely awesome. Here's just some previews, some other videos on my channel. So 
yeah, I just don't want to show copyrighted material. That's basically what I got that. So looking at this room, this is quite a cramped space and can be quite hard to get an idea of what the place looks like. Or at least that's the feeling I get when I'm just, you know, moving around, looking at stuff really close. You can sort of lose track of what the room is actually like. So I really want to give you a good idea of the entire place. So for stars in here, I suppose we can just check this shelf in the corner. Still doing everything very much in one go and sort of going left to right, trying to just keep stuff in motion and keep it coherent. Because otherwise I'm just going to lose track of what I've talked about and what I haven't talked about. So this is a section which is made up of two of these Benno shelves from Ikea. They were called CD towers back in the day, I believe. And so I'm basically using this just to front videotapes. It's a very nice type of shelf if you want to display tapes like this. I think it's very nice because it has a very sort of good height that you can fit in. Some of these old VHS style clamshells, the large boxes. They fit very well. I had to adjust some shelves down at the bottom to be able to fit in as many, but it was a very easy job. And this is basically one label. This is from an old Swedish bootleg company, which was called Video Dynamic Bahrain. They were basically releasing videotapes under that label name in order to trick people that the tapes were actually being produced in Bahrain. It's just an insane story. It's one of those only in the 80s, man, like only when videotapes were new and there was a big demand for horror movies you know they didn't have rights to release this so they just called their sort of underground label video dynamic Bahrain and hopefully no one would sort of look into it and realize that oh they're not from Bahrain they're from Sweden and they don't have the rights to them so yeah it's just one of these really cool bizarre labels it's a bootleg label but I love it because it's just very much a really big part of Sweden's videotape history. Then over here is my continuing addition to my adult section. I can't really show you this in too much detail but I'm not gonna go into close so hopefully YouTube will not flag this. Here I basically have all of my Super 8 films and these are usually very sort of graphic so I'm not gonna be able to show you any kind of covers and stuff and you might be able to spot my nipple in the background there but Hopefully it will still be okay. But yeah, I have quite a bit of Super 8 films. You know, in terms of collecting Super 8s, this is like my main passion. I actually collect vintage erotica, you know, it's really mixed. I even have gay titles in here. I'm just really big on collecting vintage stuff. And you know, basically everything that's old. I mean, part of the reason why I love to collect Super 8 films is because there's basically so much sort of amateur films on there. So it's like you never have any kind of clue as to what you are about to see, which I think is really, really fascinating. And down here are just stacks upon stacks of vintage magazines. Here, for example, is one I picked up recently. This is from a series called Satan Sex, which you might guess translates to Satan Sex. And it's basically a vintage BDSM magazine which came out in Holland in the 1970s. I really can't flip through this because then YouTube would definitely flag this. But yeah, I collect all kind of stuff and it's not really in any relation to my own personal sexual preference. Not that I feel that I have to explain this to you, but I can imagine that quite a few people are looking at this going like, this guy is a fucking pervert and maybe I am, but it's not like I buy this stuff because I have any kind of obsession about the content. I just buy this stuff because I think it's fascinating. I think history is fascinating. And I think that the history of erotica is fascinating. Because, I mean, if it was just a question about the fact that I gotta have the porn, it doesn't make sense if you think about it. I mean, I can watch porn on my television. I can fucking stream Pornhub on this thing. If I wanted to sit down and watch vintage erotica all day, 
I could do that on the television. I wouldn't have to fire up an old fucking Super 8 projector, which the film gets stuck and it starts burning and, you know, running around in your underwear. That doesn't happen. <laughs> you know, I don't even understand how that would happen back in the old days. That's also part of the thing why I think this is so fascinating, because it's like a completely different world. I can't even imagine how things were like back when people bought these films, when they were called adult loops, and people would sit around to watch these movies. I just find it's so strange to think about like people who sit in the home projecting these movies and you know maybe having a, a bit of a feel a bit of a playtime with themselves and you know i mean if you're a fan of super 8 and you know the format you know how fucking devilishly hard it can be to watch movies on a projector i mean they will get stuck it might you know burst into flames because it gets stuck and like, I can't imagine watching pornographic film on a projector and not be constantly on edge of the fact that, you know, the film might not get stuck. You have to sort of stop the machine, turn it off before it burns. I mean, it's not a machine to use when you want to have a good time. It's worrying enough to keep your eyes on the dials and trying to get the movie to play properly, let alone trying to think about like, oh, I'm gonna pleasure myself. But I'm rambling. It's not really that I feel that I have to explain this. It's just that it's fascinating. I, I, you know, I... <laughs> Maybe the heat is getting to me. I've been talking for like an hour straight, it feels like. So in any case, that's my little erotica cabinet. I really like what I've done with it. Became very much a centerpiece here in the corner. Things really cool. And it's also very much a vintage style cabinet. It's an IKEA cabinet. It's called Fabricor. I modified it, removed the legs, so it became very much a floor standing kind of thing. That's not really important. On top here, we have a vintage style machine, which is from Northwest Microfilm Inc. It is a microfish viewer, which means that you lay down this little microfish card on here. And this particular one is the same type of card that I have in that blue folder over there, which I mentioned contains microfish. And it actually contains basically a whole lot of these, whole lot of these cards. And each of these cards is a complete back-to-back -back copy of the Sports Illustrated magazine, which became quite famed for their swimsuit issues. And I'm not into sports, but I'm into vintage erotica. So I really wanted to get this because, you know, I picked up the machine and then I felt like, what am I going to put in this? Why do I need a microfish machine? And I was sort of Googling and I found this on eBay, a listing which sold a bunch of these old Sports Illustrated magazines on microfish. And I'm like... Hmm, I wonder if they also have the swimsuit issues. And they actually do. So this is actually a swimsuit issue from January 1976. As you can see there, the way it works is that you just place this. Just turn that to high. There we go. Now you can still see me, but the nipples are not in view. So then I just go ahead and move this. And you will see that we get all of these vintage articles on microfish. So here are some women at the pool, and there they are. Vintage style microfish of Sports Illustrated 1979. So yeah, I absolutely love this thing. It was a complete blind buy, got it at a secondhand store, had never heard about this format before, went home, started researching it, found the Sports Illustrated magazines on eBay, Bought them from the States, caught quite a lot of money, but then I got them. <laughs> really just one of the most epic finds I ever did. Absolutely insane and I love it. Moving on to this part of the room. Here is a whole bunch of stuff. And I suppose we can start with this shelf at the top where I got a whole bunch of stuff on display. And it's incredibly mixed. I mean, you have action figures vintage style promo oversized vhs cases i got blu-ray boxes the prisoner promotional screener tape for the usual suspects limited edition box set it's an ampus screener and i made a video on that as well in the past you can look that up if you're interested got some vintage gi joe figures mad max promotional screener box set there's a lot of stuff which has nothing to do with movies. This is just a sun visor on top of a very odd skeleton type toy. It's like I don't even I don't even know. And I'm pretty sure I did this in the old video when I talked about my man cave, but 
Just for the hell of it, let's do it again. Yeah. So you heard it. That is actually a very odd, slowed down version of the um, Exorcist theme, I believe. And actually it looks really cool with the visor. I never actually used this with the visor on there. I just combined it like this because I think it looked bizarre. And to some extent, I suppose it sort of felt somewhat fitting to the Mad Max theme. It felt like something that might be out of the Mad Max world or like, you know, post-apocalyptic sci-fi future stuff. I don't know, I just like the look of it. Then we got Natural Born Killers, Laserdisc box set. I am very much a fan of Laserdiscs, even though I don't really have a proper place to display them. Then we got some Wally -E toys. We got Johnny Five short circuit toy from China. So another one over there. I tend to get quite a lot of questions about these and I have made a video on them, which is quite detailed, so you can look that up. Then we got some other toys, vintage Transformers from my childhood. You got a Terminator Laces box set, you got a limited edition T3 DVD edition, quite old classic edition in terms of early limited edition collector's editions. We got my absolutely classic limited edition Terminator 3 DVD player. Whenever I make a video, even though it's an overview or whatever, I have to do that because I have to show you that this is actually a DVD player. Yes, this is a DVD player from Japan. It was a very sort of bizarre limited edition, which I think you could only get as part of a contest. I believe it's limited to 500 copies. There's a very old video I made about this, which is not particularly high quality. <laughs> I mean, if you look back at it today, so many of my old videos feel like, God, I'm hoping that I've moved on, that I've made some kind of progress in terms of, you know, how the videos are looking, how I'm speaking, how everything's just more coherent, they're better edited, but everything still exists, even though I'm not particularly proud of all of them today. Moving over to this side, I try to, as you might see, sometimes make things coherent. Like I will have Transformers figures at the same place. I will have robots, sci-fi. I will have Wally. -E. I will have a Wally -E box set in the background. I will have Terminator stuff roughly at the same place. Here we got Back to the Future, Back to the Future. I try to keep things sort of coherent if I can. I can't always, but I try to. And if I can't, I at least try to make it look pleasurable to the eyes. Now, moving on over here, we get to some alien stuff. I got some Star Wars, sci-fi, you know, it's always a mixed bag. There's a He-Man figure standing there in the back. Here we get the Alien Head limited edition DVD collector set. I believe this is from the UK. It's been released in Japan, a whole bunch of countries. I believe this is the UK version. It was a long time since I bought it, so I tend to forget. Then we got some vintage Star Wars toys. These are things that I played with when I was a kid. My own vintage toys, which I recently dug up from the garage and I decided to place them on display because I just think it's such a cool thing to have today. I wouldn't sell the Star Wars toys today because they're the actual toys that I played with and it feels like it's so cool to have these specific toys because I know that these were mine. You know, I actually played with these when I was a kid. I love them. They're not in the best of shape. They're very played with, but I love them and I still love them. And now I felt like, you know, it's the right time to bring these into the man cave, keep them on display. Here we got a Star Wars box set DVD. I believe it's from either HMV or MVC, which is a closed store. I don't think they exist anymore. I think it's an MVC exclusive. Made a video on that as well. There up we got Jabba the Hutt. He's reading from a Valen Euctonic card, which was a promotional card release for... I think it was Prometheus. I just like keeping my alien stuff somewhat close, which also goes down here. I have a whole bunch of more alien Star Wars stuff, so I try to keep that on the adjacent shelf or at least have some kind of a coherence. Here is a vintage style VHS Alien Trilogy limited edition collector set on videotape. I love the design of this. It's an absolutely awesome looking molded carrying case with the face hugger gripping around it. The only problem with this case is that it gets really dusty and it's very hard to sort of clean up all of these little creases. So that's my only complaint. Otherwise, it's one of the most awesome looking sets I've ever seen. 
Down here, some more vintage toys from an old toy line, which I believe was called Little Playmates. I don't have any sort of, you know, recollection or memory of this particular series. Like, I didn't even remember that's what they were called. But I do remember these figures very much from my childhood, as stuff I played with at a very young age. And looking at them today, I mean, they look so vintage, and I would love to actually collect more from the series. Because, I don't know, to me, they're so incredibly retro. I love them, and I love the fact that these are my toys from when I was a kid. Then we got some other stuff, and here we get to my Minority Report section. I'm a huge fan of Minority Report, and it's sort of become this thing which I suppose I became sort of famous for. Not that I think I'm like a YouTube sensation or anything, but back when I started collecting my sort of DVD obsession started with the Minority Report press kits. These are these really, really heavy promotional tin boxes for Minority Report. There's a whole bunch of variations, but they are basically press kits. This thing weighs close to one kilo, and it is the size of one of these old portable CD players. Now, I made a ton of videos about these, so I'm not going to go into them in detail, but I love them to this day, and it's always been like these holy grails which I collected Back in the day when I started, I wouldn't sell them for anything in the world because they are very much a part of what made the Disc Junkie name when I started out. Like this was kind of the stuff that I was noticed for back when I started because this is like the stuff which people had never seen before and everyone was like, you know, you have the weirdest stuff that I've never heard about. And yeah, still to this day, these are incredibly hard to find. I saw this one listed on eBay yesterday. It was listed for 1,000 fucking US dollars, which is crazy. I don't think it's worth that kind of money, but that just goes to show how rare these are. People are actually listing them for crazy money. In the back there, we got a promotional VHS boxes, which is really big, also for Minority Report, and this is a video store only promo, I think, but I made a video on that, so you can watch that if you want to check it out in detail. Just search for, you know, Disc Junkie Minority Report, I'm sure you'll find it. On top of that, we actually have some of these vintage toy figures from a lineup which is called Laser Beasts. Really, really bizarre toy line. I remember them from, you know, when I was a kid, but I had no idea what they were, what they were called. I mean, everybody knew that Transformers were Transformers and that Star Wars was Star Wars, but I had never even heard about the name of these until I sort of dug them up from the garage and posted some pictures of them on Instagram and people were like, oh, they're sort of laser beast and they're actually quite collectible. Not super collectible, but some of these will go for like 30, 40 bucks per figure. Although, I mean, these are played with, so maybe not in the best of shape, but just to give you some idea that, yeah, you can actually get money for these still today. So moving on over here, we get to the Minority Report limited edition at the Shake case, another crazy, crazy promo item. It is a screening copy DVD, and I made a video about it. Just look it up. Over here, we got another G.I. Joe set. This is the Ice Saber, which I recently hauled out of the garage as well. Decided to display it with all the original figures. Then we got a Buzz Lightyear toy. And recently over here, I just finished up this new Matrix display. So here I got some promotional boxes for the Matrix. Got a DVD box set, and then I got this display for Matrix Reloaded, and I found this at a flea market, surprisingly. Actually made quite a good deal on it. I think it's missing some of the stuff, like it's missing some of the swords, but overall it looks like it's fairly complete. And I've never really had this on display so much, I wasn't really sure where to place it, haven't found a good spot for it. But I think it works really, really well here in what I've done with the room now. So I was really happy to finally be able to have this on display and sort of just make it an intricate part of the room because I think it's actually quite a fun and quite a unique looking display piece, to be honest. And I know probably a lot of people are going to be like, what's with the fucking octopus? How is that connecting to the Matrix? It's not. It's not connecting to anything. This is a metal octopus, which I think looks awesome. I found it at a flea market, don't know where it came from, don't know who made it, just think it looks cool, and yeah, there it is. You know, my collection is never gonna make sense to anybody but me, but that's also part of why I like it. That's also part of what being a collector is all about, is that this is my world. It's gonna make sense to me, probably not to anyone else, but that's also part of 
why I love this space, because I'm able to build this into my own little private corner of the world, and I can do exactly what the hell I want in here, and it doesn't have to make a whole lot of sense to anyone else. But I'm rambling, so let's just move on. Over here we have some of my Dark Knight slash Christopher Nolan section. I got some prop replicas like these totems from Inception. I got a promotional Polaroid, not real, but replica Polaroid for Memento. Here is actually a wallet which looks like Polaroid. And this was something I made myself. I bought this off of eBay. It's just a very sort of generic kind of wallet, which looks like a Polaroid picture. And it's actually designed so you can put any kind of picture you want in the pocket and it will look like a vintage style Polaroid. So I saw this on eBay and instantly felt like I gotta have that wallet. And then I'm gonna actually place my own style replica photos of Memento in there. I had these for quite a few few years that's why it's very worn but it's not even a prop it's not anything it's just a wallet which I put together myself but that's part of it I mean that's the whole thing I can do anything I want in this place and you know it only has to make sense to me this whole thing this room the whole thing about collecting movies and collecting props and collecting things I feel that I'm sort of collecting the props of my own life. I know that sounds very strange and maybe a bit sort of hippie like whatever, but that's basically what it is. Like I had this for many years, it was my actual wallet and I loved it. And I mean, I could have thrown it out when I was done with it. I could have sort of crashed it because it was worn, but I felt like, you know, I love this. I love this idea and love what I did with it. So I'm actually gonna keep it. It's a display piece now. It's part of the collection. People are probably gonna ask about these. These are limited editions promotional sets this is a press kit for dark knight really cool looking tin box it here is the dark knight screener case i made videos on this you can look them up made videos on this as well this is another promotional set a screener set for dark knight rises which you can hardly see down there but i'm gonna try to move on so we will get through this eventually over here is a very sort of new section which i haven't talked too much about in any sort of previous video because i just finished this up a little while ago now these are some custom shelves that i put in so looking at this top section here i want to talk a little bit about the sort of medical theme that's going on now, if you're noticing a bit of inconsistency here in terms of placements and stuff on the shelf, that's quite natural. I actually had to delete this entire video from YouTube, take it down, edit it and re-upload it for a very ridiculous and really annoying reason. But I'm going to get into that just as we talk about this little thing. And this is a small jar which actually contains some rather large gallstones. And if you don't know what gallstones are, just a quick recap. They are essentially this stone-like material which you can have in your gallbladder. And this is primarily something which occurs in women of older age. But these are actually my gallstones. I actually had quite the episode a while back where I uh, suffered uh, some gallstone attacks. And these are really, really painful. It's nothing dangerous, but it's painful as hell. And I had these coming back for a few years, or, well, at least sort of reoccurring, and I was totally convinced that, you know, these are because of gallstones. So I went to the doctor late one night, went to the emergency room, and told them, like, I have these extreme pains in, like, my stomach, my chest, and I'm assuming it's gallstones because I get them when I eat stuff like raw onions and things like that. And they looked at my chart and were like, duh, you don't have gallstones, you're not in the proper age group. Now, what I didn't know then, but I know that now, is that, you know, I've had this uh, birth disease, this defect, which I've known about since I was a young kid. I've always had it, and it's been well documented. And it's this really, really rare disease. It's a metabolic disease, which is called methylmalonical acidemia, MMA for short. And um, this is, you know... I've had this all my life, but what I didn't know when I got these attacks is that gallstones is actually a really, really common byproduct or a really common side effect to having this disease. But I had never heard this. So when I went to the emergency room and the sort of regular doctors looked at me, they didn't understand why I would have gallstones. So they started treating me for ulcers and it just became this whole thing, which, you know, got misdiagnosed and didn't work very well. But 
you know, eventually they did rule everything else out and they took like a like an ultrasound on my gallbladder and stuff and saw that it was full of stones. So they just sort of rushed me and ordered me very quickly to uh, surgery. I got my gallbladder removed and afterwards they were actually like, you know, you want to see your gallstones? And I'm like, yeah. And so they brought me this little jar and I was like, you know, can I, can I keep this? And they were like, sure. So yeah, if you've never seen gallstones in real life, this is what they look like. And it feels so insane that these little bizarre pieces of rock or, well, I don't know what they're made of, but they are rock, rock-like were actually in my body. And the reason why this video was once uploaded and then taken down was because I, being an idiot, didn't realize that I actually had my social security number on here, which is why it's now blacked out. So you can still see the first numbers, but that's just essentially my date of birth, which, you know, I don't really mind. I'd rather keep that on the box. So now you know my birthday. So then you can actually send me a package or something if you want to. Show your true fan and send me something for my birthday. But in any case, that's the story about my gallstones. And now they are here. They're part of the collection because that's the kind of mad person that I am. And I thought we would also look at some of the other stuff here. Keeping to the medical theme, we got a promotional sort of highlighter. It's actually a pen. It's a highlighter syringe for the movie Crank. Not sure if I'm a super huge fan of that, but you know, thought it was fun promo. Then we got this, which is really cool. This is a Emmy edition of the TV series House. And this is was one of the first sort of releases which I uploaded on YouTube and reviewed. And it comes in this really, really awesome liquid filled fake blood bag. And I I just love this. This is still like one of my all time favorite packaging designs because it's just so ridiculously cool and it actually came delivered in this really wicked little jiffy bag which is actually labeled Princeton Plainsboro Hospital which is obviously a fake hospital or but you know it's a hospital in the show then you have up here addictive materials enclosed and yeah it's just I mean this is the kind of stuff that's my favorite stuff in terms of you know, promotional materials and weird stuff where you're just trying to sell something and market it in a really clever way. I mean, that's always been like my all-time favorite sort of things to collect. And aside from this medical theme, we got some Dexter things there, which I'm also going to talk a little bit about. We got this, which is another really favorite part of my little man cave. And this is my fawn head or devil head or phone head, if you want, because... This is where I keep my headphones, as you can plainly see. So that's the only real reason why this is there. And this is like some sort of, not really stone or cement, I'm guessing ceramic, I don't know. But I found this head at a flea market and you can hardly make it out, but it does have these little, little horns here, which almost sort of disappear into his uh, hairstyle. But I just love this guy. And also love the fact that, you know, the eyes are very detailed. They're actually sort of, you know, carved out to create that illusion of his pupils. And uh, yeah, it's just a really, really cool little sculpture. No idea about the origin. Just found it at random at a flea market and picked it up. Cause I thought it looked so cool. But uh, yeah, this, you know, from gallstones to fallen heads to blood bags, this is what I'm all about. This is my madness right here. And moving on to some more bizarre things. While on the topic of madness, one of the things which I'm really devoted to and very much madly in love with are these vintage style erotic pocketbooks. And I know I mentioned before the publisher who released the uh, Crime Weekly magazine, his name is Kurt Hawson, and he was known as the porn king in Swedish media back in the day. And he released so much erotica over the years. And these are some examples. He had his own label, which was called Fickis. It was like a series of these pocketbooks from the 70s. And these are basically porn novels. And I'm wondering if I can show you some of them just to give you some idea. I'm going to try to pull out some titles which are not X-rated on the cover. But it's basically these really colorful 70s books from Sweden. And most of them are like, you know, they will have quite X-rated cover. This is illustrated, so hopefully I can show this. But 
many of them are photo illustrated, which is part of the fun of it. And I mean, these are really hardcore photos, but for the most part, I mean, it is a novel. So it's basically all text, but there are hardcore inserts, like some pages will have photos, like black and white, vintage, hardcore, real pornographic stuff. But I love them for their cool covers. I love the colors, I love the language, and it's just... It's a part of history, man. That's really all it is. And I just think it's fascinating. And many of these are quite collectible. I mean, I've bought quite a few of them, sort of basically collecting like a series. And I can tell you, I mean, I've sold some because I had duplicates. Some of these, like a single book, could sell for 300 Swedish crowns and upwards. And for anyone internationally, we're talking like 30 euros per book is not unheard of. I mean, I've actually sold a single book for like 70 euros or even 80. So there's a lot of collectible value in this. So it's not like I'm just buying this because I'm a horny motherfucker. No, it's just... I collect them. I'm a collector. That's what I do. Get over it. Then over here we got a small sort of Dexter section. I'm really a big fan of the Dexter TV series. Here we got a limited edition DVD set from Australia, which came in this little, you know, sort of evidence style plastic bag, which I think is really cool. Then we got a limited edition custom made blood slides box which was made by a guy called michael cosentino and i believe jimmy cosentino you know son and the dad and it's like they started making these custom boxes for fun because they loved the show and the dad was like a carpenter so they made this really high quality version of dexter's blood slides box and they didn't have the rights to this or anything they just made them because it was like a cool custom project for film lovers and this actually came back to HBO. They actually found out about this. And they love the craftsmanship so much. So that starting from season 5. The father and the son were actually hired. To make the actual boxes used in the show from season 5. And so what is really special about my specific copy. Is that I got this as a little extra gift because i was very much in contact with them and i made some videos and they really liked it sort of me just spreading the word so yeah this is a trophy box from the limited show run and this is one of four boxes that were not sent to the production studio of dexter and what this means is that when they made these box sets they basically made 10 of these from one piece of log or one piece of wood and so when they made the studio batch they made 10 boxes, and 4 of those boxes were sold to the public, whereas the rest of them were sent to the studio. So this box was actually made from the exact same piece of wood or log as the show versions. The boxes you see in season 5, the actual props came from the very same log and the exact same specifications, same makers who made the ones for the show. So it's almost like I'm having a real screen used prop, except it wasn't really screen used, but you get the idea. So yeah, I know I'm babbling. Down here we got some prop replicas. This is a self-made ice truck killer doll. And this is quite a prominent and well-known part of the Dexter series. I just love it. I made it myself based off of the exactly same model of doll as they use on the show. Which is actually quite a rare and collectible doll these days. But there's a video on this as well. I make videos on almost everything. So you can look that up as well if you want to. And we got the corner. My little lamp here which I really love. And then we got a new section here which is sort of hard to describe but I got some Jacob's Ladder stuff off here you know it's not like it's all Jacob's Ladder we obviously got the little photo in the back framed and all that we got a DVD and then I just put in some stuff which I felt sort of fitted the theme here's like a promotional syringe for the movie Touristas here's a vintage style doll head which I found at a flea market then we got an arm, which should belong to this guy. Unfortunately, he lost it. And this is also like some sort of very, you know, random, generic... I don't know, it's just a plush figure. And I thought it looked really cool. Very sort of strange, bizarre, eerie. I don't know, it felt fitting. Down here, we have this guy, which is also a flea market find. He is basically a corkscrew. So you just do that, and you can open a wine bottle. He's awesome. I love him. Doesn't make sense, but he's there. 
Here is a vintage Super 8 box set for something called Fantasex. Very much a pornographic, hardcore erotica set. So it should probably be in there. But I like it so much that I want to display it. Here's just a small sort of mask, completely unrelated. But I like the black and gold combo. Here are some more vintage pocketbooks. Here is a vintage style army chlorine protection bag. Makes no sense. Then we got a mask of some sort. Down here we have my small, very sort of moderate collection of Vinegar Syndrome DVDs and Blu-rays. I just started collecting this so I don't have too many titles from this series. But it's just a label that I absolutely love. So gotta have them in their own section. Then we got some Agfa titles here. Just two of them. I just recently started collecting that as well. And then in between we got the limited edition Old Boy Collector's Trilogy set from UK, I believe. It's the set which has the, you know, hammer style bottle opener. You probably heard about it. It's a limited edition classic. And yeah, then I suppose we go over to talking about everything else in the room on the lower shelves. And actually before I do that I can show you because I got this little stool or poof or whatever you call these which I actually picked up today or the day before or whatever. It's a bit of inconsistency in the video because I know this wasn't here just now. But in any case it's a very simple little thing you can sit on and it actually has storage in it. So I got this at a Swedish store, which is called ÖB, sort of like the surplus warehouse, basically is the translation. And I was quite surprised because I've been looking for something along this color scheme, like something red to go with these old theater chairs that I got. Now, this isn't a 100% match. As you can see, the stools are a little bit darker and they are sort of like in this faux type of velvety quality. You can see that it's very easy to make little patterns on it if you want to. But I basically picked these up because I went somewhere to store my laser disc. And it actually works really well for this purpose, I would say. So I tend to keep some laser discs in here. You know, the occasional vinyl record, perhaps. And uh, I mean, if you're looking for a place to store vinyl records or store, you know, stuff that you don't really need to have on display, I really think that these little storage boxes or what you want to call them are really quite practical and you can also if you're not using it you can fold this so it becomes very flat and you can store it away but uh, yeah I quite like the quality on this I gotta say it was a whole lot better than I thought and these were selling for 149 Swedish crowns but I couldn't find one wherever I went it was like sold out and the only one they had was like the store display copy so I asked them if I could purchase that one and they were like fine you know no problem and then when I get to the cash register and I go to pay for my little merch they were actually 50% off and this was in no way mentioned anywhere in the store so I actually thought that they made a mistake so yeah I just paid 75 Swedish crowns for this you know that's a whole lot cheaper than what you usually pay and like I said it is actually really good quality it's got like a wooden base for the top so you can actually sit on this if you want to and and the second reason why I picked this up is because I really wanted to get a little footstool. Something to keep my feet on while I'm sitting there watching the TV. So that was like the other main purpose apart from storage. So I really like combining those. And I actually picked up two of them. Really happy about that. But now I think it's high time that we move on to the lower shelves. And so let's just begin right up here at the top. And if you've watched some of these man cave videos I've done in the past, I think that most of these shelves down here will be, you know, not particularly interesting in the sense that I've showed them before and I don't think I've reorganized too much on these. There might be some stuff, but most of the things are probably sort of where they were in the old videos, but I'm not sure. So first up here, we got my little Frank Darabont section. Really great director, really love his work. He hasn't done a whole lot of stuff, but the movies he's done are really, really awesome. And you know, he was part of uh, the Walking Dead series in the beginning as well. So I just think he is a really, really interesting and great director who tends to do really good stuff. Then we got a small section which sort of mixes Richard Stanley stuff with some Phantasm stuff because you know some of these shelves don't really have the possibility to hold like these large size clamshells you know they don't really fit in here so for that reason I've sort of mixed things up and you know I still try to keep my Phantasm stuff at the same place but seeing as these shelves are a little bit lower you know I'll keep 
the larger cases on top and the smaller cases on the bottom. Then we got some stuff down here and this is obviously from the same label. This is something called Uno Media which is a Swedish VHS label and over here continuing we got some more stuff like that. These are Swedish labels. We got NM International. We also got MDC and uh, I just try to keep VHS labels like that together especially the Swedish ones where I will have quite a few films from the same label I really like to keep them together then we get to I suppose sort of like a drama comedy kind of section I don't have a lot of those because it's not particularly like a genre which I like to collect but I do have some stuff so you can see here try to display it a little bit then moving upwards we got my small David Lynch section which is something which has been with me from the really early videos i think if you check like some of my earliest videos where i talk about my collection i will actually have a small david lynch section and it hasn't changed much i know i collected david lynch films a whole lot when i was starting out with my collecting but nowadays i don't nearly buy as many dvds and blu-rays as i used to so the same goes for limited editions and stuff like i really try to just go for like the super bizarre stuff or really cool promos and things like that so this hasn't really grown much but here are basically all of my david lynch box sets and releases and most of these are limited editions apart from like the videotapes and stuff and there are also usually like stuff behind these tapes so I'm not just filling up space I'm rather just trying to keep it a bit interesting in terms of the display setup so to speak up here at the top we got some action films or films that are like these sort of classic cool movies like Killing Zoe, Leon aka The Professional, we got Kill Bill you know, like Quentin Tarantino, that kind of stuff, Robert Rodriguez, you know, things that sort of go, in my opinion, in the same genre or feel, like these sort of future cult directors, like you know it's going to be like a cult classic in 20 years or so. And moving over here, I also have some of the same stuff. I got Natural Born Killers, Rules of Attraction, really great film which I absolutely love from Roger Avery. Got Train Spotting and a lot of these sort of cult classic films which were really popular and sort of made famous when I grew up. So this is the kind of movies which I really sort of fell in love with when I was sort of getting into films and really becoming interested, which would have been, I suppose, back in the 90s when I, you know, started collecting rental videotapes and stuff. So we got Snatch and other sort of films of that nature, which are really sort of cool movies, if you will. Then moving downwards, we get to a bit more of an, I suppose, action-adventure kind of section. Here I have some campy sci-fi. I'm a really big Flash Gordon fan. And we also got like 300 Jurassic Park Battle Royale box set. I mean, it's all very mixed. I also have like the sort of classic King Kong production diaries box set, which was one of those things which like everybody bought when it came out. But I still think it's a really cool sort of limited edition set. And there's a lot of old limited editions like that in my collection, seeing as I've been doing this for such a long time and I sort of started out focusing a whole lot on that particular subgenre within collecting. So down here we are still at this sort of drama comedy section bridging over here so here are some other drama films and comedies we've got some seinfeld box sets you know i've had these on dvd forever it's like when they first came out on dvd i bought them and was really sort of particular about collecting like just buying the australian releases because the australian releases had swedish subtitles but the boxes themselves were in english like the box art you know i like the international artwork but i still wanted to get the swedish subtitles and australia was one of those countries which in the beginning was very very sort of common place to get Swedish subtitles on an international release so this is all just rambling moving down here we get to really sort of loose territory in terms of organizing because this is just like any kind of tape from any kind of region that doesn't fit in anywhere else seeing as it's not like a particular label I collect or like a particular movie or whatever it's just random films which I picked up for whatever reason because you know their videotapes and like videotapes and the same sort of goes over here very sort of mixed then we got a movie box sitting here in the corner one of these old rentable vcrs which i'm not going to get into now but that's what it is and the same sort of continuously mixed tiles down there moving upwards here we get to a bit more sorting again and here i got my documentaries and above that we got more mixed tapes, just random films, international titles, international releases, but not a whole lot of sorting, not a whole lot of common denominators, it's just mixed 
from wherever I can't find a good spot for it so it ends up on one of these shelves. Then up top we got my small animation section with Futurama, Wallace and Gromit, so it's like animations slash cartoons, that kind of stuff. And then of course over here, the smaller section, we got some classic sort of collection box sets. Bronx Warriors Trilogy, Superman, Blade Runner, and then downwards we got all of my Mad Max videotapes, as well as some of these copies of the Ninja Mission, which is a really cool sort of cult classic Swedish film, which was made in the 80s, very sort of infamous movie in Sweden. And you know, why those are at the same place? There's no real reason for it, apart from the fact that those are two movies that I collect very much in a sort of double-dipping fashion, and then I like to keep them at the same place. There's really no reason, they just happen to end up there. And then we get to some other sci-fi classics. We got the Event Horizon, Terminator boxes, Matrix, Robocop, things of that nature. There's also Rocky boxes there for some reason. And then we're back down to mixed tapes. Usually it's a lot of sort of weird tapes. You know, I love my weird tapes. Down here we got a lot of video wire kits which I collect, which are basically just clamshells which contain video wires like Scott wires and whatever. These were very sort of popular back in the day. Like in the early days of videotaping, you could actually buy these like clamshells which just had a bunch of wires in them which you would use to connect two VCRs together and then you would be able to duplicate tapes. That's basically what it was for. So for whatever reason, I tend to collect that because if I see one when I'm out and about, I just pick it up because I think it's such a cool nostalgic thing. So I have quite a few of these lined up as well as some other bizarro tapes. Yeah, I'm all about if I see something really weird, like a sort of commercial or an old ad tape or something, or an instructional with video that looks really, really stupid, I just have to have it. And I also got some of these like, computer terminal cleaning kits very very retro and yeah there's a whole bunch of weird stuff here's american psycho a swedish screening copy really ugly looking like it's super super simple and cheaply made but i'm a really big fan of the film and this is also the kind of stuff that i've sort of learned in recent years to appreciate like back when i was starting out collecting i wouldn't have given any kind of interest in a release like this i mean i know this has no value this is like a zero value tape no one would give a shit about this but just the fact that it's like a screener, even though it's like super shoddy and poorly made, it is still a screener tape. And by that standard, you know, I think it's a really sort of curious thing to have that, you know, this is one of those copies which came straight from Egmont Entertainment, which was like the distribution company for the movie here in Sweden. So yeah, I mean, I like tapes like this, even though they might not be super collectible or like well designed, they can be ugly as shit. And I still think like it's, you know, this kind of stuff that's really, really cool to own. And here is another rentable type VCR, but this is actually a DVD player in this really sweet little rental bag so also got one of those then we get to some more mixed tape over here like the weird tapes usually swedish sets but we're not quite done so over here first i have a section which has a lot of sort of asian tapes or basically tapes i can't read like you know i'm no i'm generalizing a whole lot but you know i got some japanese one there's also some korean ones and i think this one for instance i think from israel but I try to sort of collect them just based on the design style here. Like it will have writing in not even English characters. That's like, you know, the thing I was going for here. Some of these shelves aren't entirely full, but I try to sort of display them so it looks like they're at least sort of full. And moving up here, we have my American uh, Warner Brother releases, the old Warner Home video versions. And this is one that is custom tape, which I made myself for Kung Fury. And there's a very detailed video on this and like the history of what this happened to lead me up to. I actually sent a copy of that to the director of Kung Fury, David Sandberg. And he liked the initiative so much that I actually ended up getting to work as a designer for the official Kung Fury VHS for their Kickstarter campaign. So all because I took a shot at sending him one of my custom clams. So it's a really fun story, which I'll always remember. Looking up here, we got some of these classic Korean releases. 
some really early Korean limited editions and collector's editions back when Korea was like in its sort of golden era in terms of releasing limited editions. This is kind of like a lot of sets which people ask questions about because they're really really hard to come by these days. I'm not saying all of them but quite a few of them like this one which I made a video on very early on in my YouTube career which is the Brokeback Mountain denim box. It actually comes in a denim slip case and this is one of those sets which tends to come back over the years like people you know message me and ask me about like where did you buy this how can I get it and it's actually an old Taiwanese release and it's just one of those sets which has become downright impossible to get these days. Bought it way back, even though I don't generally collect uh, drama and stuff like that in limited editions. It's just too cool to pass up and was so weird when it came out. Like, remember that this was really early days of DVD collecting, so it's not something that people had generally seen. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a denim box set before this, and I'm not sure if I've seen one after this. It's just not the most common material to be used for a, you know, limited edition box or slipcase or whatever. Over here we get to some general sci-fi, a lot of alien box sets, Prometheus, Star Wars, a bunch of minority report sets, you know, screener copies and stuff, like this for instance, for your consideration, quite unusual, simple keep case, but still, you know, like I said, I have a lot of history in terms of minority report and these really rare press kits and stuff like that, so maybe not as cool, but equally rare, like simple FYC or screening copies. Then down here we get more of the Warner Brothers, Warner Home videotapes. So there were the American ones, and here usually are like the Swedish or European versions, which would go in a sort of quite different design style, you know, that the American ones have these really good looking, which I love, I love this design, with the whole sort of pattern in the background, sort of very coherent in the style and the whole color scheme, just, you know, shifting the colors in terms of shifting releases. Whereas if you look at the European versions, you will have a lot of these sort of similar and very sort of coherent black spines with the logos and all that. And also that, you know, the covers will be very much the same, having like a theatrical poster art and stuff like that, or just picture from the film, I mean, you can look at some of them but usually that's like the way they were designed that's stuff i really like oh here's another classic i think this is one of the first warner releases i picked up this is thx 1138 absolutely awesome sci-fi george lucas before he was famed for star wars he made this sci-fi which is to this day one of my all-time favorite sci-fi so i think it's before it's time there's a director's cut which is out on dvd which i have somewhere and I like the director's cut version, but there's also quite a bit of stuff I don't like about it. It's a very mixed bag, but regardless if you watch the director's cut or the theatrical version, it's still absolutely mind-blowing film in terms of science fiction. I mean, it's one of those things which you just have to see if you're into sci-fi and into film history. I think it's a great, great example of Lucas' words outside of Star Wars. Anyway, then we get to some more sort of adventure type stuff we got gladiator we got da vinci code indiana jones national treasures sort of in the same era as well as a few sort of war movies i don't have a whole lot of war movies but i got a few of them so i, I don't know i put them here for some reason then we get to the bottom shelf again with more of these mixed tapes like i mentioned like they're not really any kind of topic just sort of weird topics in general so i'm gonna move this out of the way and we'll continue to the next shelf here and once again more of the same stuff you know video filming school how to make better videotapes or well make better video clips i suppose sadly it's on video 2000 which is a very sort of absolute format which i can't even play because i don't have a video 2000 player then moving upwards we have sort of alternate futures slash sci-fi quite mixed as well but i've tried to sort of keep the movie genres to that we got watchmen district 9 tron some matrix as well death race 2000 reign of fire escape from new york equilibrium doomsday I don't know why I'm just listing movies. I don't know if it's interesting. John and Mnemonic, Cube, Pi, Scanner Darkly, Gremlins. You know, sort of in the same area in some ways. And next shelf, we got some VHS labels, a Swedish label. We got Walter's video. Very sort of colorful, beautiful designs, I think. 
and uh, some of them are Betamax copies and others are on video so it's quite mixed just the same label and uh, yeah there's another label as well this is from I don't even know what this is this one is from Sandrevs but I also got like some Nordic film group releases in the back so in any case they are from the same label so they're sort of current then up here I decided to put my Stanley Kubrick and David Fincher stuff so I comprised those because it's like two of these directors which I like to collect so a lot of sort of Stanley Kubrick videotapes here I got some old old VHS box set then I got these sort of classic collector's edition DVDs which came out really early on there's a steel book box set or steel case box set which came out in Spain I believe it was quite the rarity when it came out I don't know if it's gone out of print or how hard it is to find out but I imagine it's not all that common then we got David Fincher stuff like I said another Kubrick box set from the same series from Warner Brothers and the rest of my David Fincher stuff there and a lot of the David Fincher stuff and things like that you know back in those days I would buy a lot of diggy packs or collector's editions and I do a lot of double dipping for like seven and got a whole bunch of version of those you know ranging from Japanese videotapes to like screening videotapes steel books diggy packs slip cases you know back in those days I was just very much focused on particular directors because I wasn't as broad in my collection as I used today. So yeah, a lot of old early collector's editions in those sections. And moving towards the end, we can just continue by looking at these shelves down here. And here are some more VHS releases from Sweden from the same label. We got Video Trade. I don't even know what this is. I think it's... Uh, what is this? I always tend to forget. Oh, it's Prisma. Prisma film. So this is Rawhead Rex. And uh, yeah, some more stuff from that label. Moving upwards, we had some boxes there which are temporarily removed. So that really matter. But here are also some sci-fi boxes like Back to the Future, Event Horizon, Iron Man, Mad Max DVD. Still in the center, sort of same, moving on from that sci-fi, alternate future stuff to more things of that nature. Then upwards, we got more Swedish videotapes, quite mixed in terms of the labels, but some of them are the same. And for some reason, I think this shelf has become like some of my really, really rare Swedish tapes. And I'm not saying like all of them are super rare, but there are versions in here which are really, really unique. For example, this, which I think I showed in an earlier video from the VHS Collectors Gathering. And this is a very early release of Westworld in Sweden. This is from the Swedish company Aselti, which you probably remember from the other room where they were usually a lot of these very sort of yellow and colorful cases. And this is like one of their earlier series, which was like a silver kind of label. And this is Soylent Green from the same label absolutely beautiful cover design so i don't have a lot from this i basically have these two maybe one more from this sort of early silver series but i really like the design of these and you know looking at some of the other ones we got a couple titles from video invest which was a really collectible label so there i got bloody birthday i got boogeyman which is very sort of legendary swedish release and I also got Inseminoid, which is one of my favorite releases from this label. But um, let's see what else there is. Oh yeah, then we got these. This is a label which is also very famous here in Sweden, which is called Red Baron. And they only released like a handful of titles. I don't know, maybe like 10 or something. And the cover designs on these are amazing. The films themselves are not the most common. Like it's not super known titles, I think. But here we example got Dead of Night, absolutely awesome looking cover. And even though the design is quite simple, I like the idea that they have sort of somewhat coherent. Here we got The Life Taker, also quite an obscure but really, really cool film. And you can see the back covers, they're very much in the same style, but sort of using different fonts. So still very coherent, but very much sort of unique, like each one will look different. And these go for quite a lot of money. I don't know about these two ones in particular, but I think these are easily like 50 or 60 euro per tape. And I know there's, you know, some videotapes from this label which will go for like 100 euro a piece, easy. 
but I don't have any of those super rare ones. I just have those two. I wouldn't mind collecting the whole series, but it's very costly, so it's not something I'm focusing on right now. But uh, yeah, then we got some stuff from uh, Hem Video Film, also a collectible label. You might recall this, which is Mad Rider, which I picked up at a recent free haul of videotapes, and this was one of the coolest finds in that lot. Here are some other stuff from that label. We got here New York Killer Road Games, which is also really classic. Love this cover design. Let's see what else. There's various stuff here. Sisters of Death on Global Video. Also quite a cool film. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can pull out examples like this all day, but I think it's, you know, more interesting to just give you a general idea. If people have questions about a particular title or if you see some spine that you're curious about, you know, comment and I might be able to send you a picture or show you more in the video. But anyway, moving upwards, so we try to get this done. Here is my Christopher Nolan section, which basically has... Christopher Nolan movies, as you might imagine. This was also a director which I collected quite frequently in the beginning, sort of at the start of my YouTube career. And, uh, you know, a lot of these are limited editions or collectors editions or releases which might not be all that common. I'm not saying that all of them are super collectible, but back when they came out, when I collected them, they were sort of at the top of their game, like limited editions and diggy packs and stuff like that. I don't know if we can look at some of the more unusual ones. Here's an early first pressing of Insomnia from Japan. It's quite a unique design. And uh, let's see what else we got. Here is a American Steelbook for Memento. I think it's American, possibly Canadian. Here's actually a Steelbook from, I think it's Italy. Quite an unusual one. At least not one I've seen too often. Then we got a various amount of Dark Knight and Batman Gin stuff, which I collected for a few years. And I think we can move on to the next shelf here. And down here I got some more Swedish video releases. Here in particular I've decided to sort up ones which come from this label called Video Clubben or the Video Club if you want to translate it. And they have this really nice coherent logo. I really like the retro-ish design of this. And here is a double feature. We got Death Rate 2000 and Android. But, I mean, it's not like they only did double features. That was sort of like a special thing that they did every once in a while. Let's see what else we got. Here is a Terror Train, another horror classic. Then I got some other from Crown Video. Not as collectible label, but, I mean, I try to keep things sort of at the same place. Here is an old label, which is early sort of Thorn EMI, come in these small clams, and I got these at a recent VHS haul as well. A bunch of free tapes, which are not super collectible, but they're actually quite unusual today. And then moving upwards, we got my small little... Uh, <laughs> what the hell are they called? The Coen Brothers. Small Coen Brothers section. So we got Fargo. I noticed I have 12 monkeys. Why 12 monkeys? Oh yeah, it's a Coen Brothers slash Terry Gilliam. I don't know why. Probably because it's two directors, or three actually, which I really like. I really like their movies, always great films, but I didn't have too many of them because it feels like when I was, you know, into collecting these films at that time, they hadn't made too many movies. And also back in those days, I just bought like one release for each film, which is, you know, quite different from today. Now I tend to do a lot of double dipping, but... Yeah, back when this was purchased, I just purchased like one release per film. And then of course at the top we just continue the same theme. So there also we got Fargo, Lebowski, Brazil, same collection of directors. And that is basically it for the lower shelves. Now we still have this shelf over here. I mean, we looked at some of it and looked at the Dexter stuff and all that. And I don't really think we can look at the books. I mean, they are way too uncensored in terms of the covers usually, so yeah. What this means is that I've basically gone through the entire collection and you had sort of forgotten that I wasn't wearing a shirt, hadn't you? But I don't really know what else I'm gonna say about my collection. I mean, I don't do a lot of these sort of full walkthrough videos all the time because I feel that it wouldn't be so interesting, you know, obviously you sort of have to wait a while before you show the collection, because otherwise it's just going to be the same stuff, and, you know, that doesn't really interest anyone. 
But I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or you see some items in the video that you feel like, you know, I really want to see more about that, you know, by all means, comment and subscribe, show your love. I always really enjoy it when you sort of interact with these videos because, I mean, you know, I just make these videos for fun. And, you know, if it wasn't for you, the viewer, it wouldn't really matter. You know, it's not fun just making them for myself. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this as usual. And also as usual, I really hope to see you all next time. Is that, how do you hold this? Sorry, whatever.